Today, we're talking about another portable power station and specifically this, the Powerness Hiker U500. Now, I have made a number of videos on portable power stations on the channel in recent months. And the reason for that is, yes, manufacturers have been reaching out, but they are also something I use an awful lot in my day-to-day -day life. I have had a number of these over the years and I use them not only to make content on the channel, but I also take them with me when I go camping with my family as well. Now, what we're going to do today is take a closer look at this specific model, which is the U500. It has many of the same features and capabilities that you may find in other power stations, but there is also something else that we're going to take a look at, and that is this, the Powerness solar panel charging kit for it as well, which allows you to charge this out in the field too. And what we're going to do in this video is give you an overview of the power station, the solar kit, we're going to put it on the bench, we're going to test it, we'll see what kind of capacities we get from it, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now, just to be clear up front and do what everyone says at the start of a video like this, and that is, I was sent this product for free. I have not, though, been paid to make this video, and like all content on my channel, my thoughts are entirely my own. Just because I have been sent it for free and I probably get to keep it, that does not influence my opinion. I am going to tell you what I think about it, just like I do with any other product on the market. So let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at its features and capabilities. First of all, we'll then get through the bench testing and then at the end, tell you what I think. Okay, so starting with the power station and then we'll move outside and start talking about the solar setup. Now, the U500 is a 515 watt hour portable power station. It features a battery voltage of 14.8 volts and an amp hour rating of 34.8. It has a built-in true sine wave AC inverter, which supports 500 watts continuously or 1000 watts peak. It has four USB-A ports and a single USB-C port. Three of those USB-A's can support 2.4 amps at 5 volts. And the fourth USB-A port is a QC port up to 18 watts. The USB-C port supports power delivery up to 60 watts, but it's also an input port as well, allowing you to charge the power station via USB-C. There are three 10 amp DC ports on the front too. We have a single DC output with an accessory socket and then two DC jack outputs, again, all supporting 10 amps. And there's also a wireless charging option on the top, which allows you to charge your smartphone if compatible. On the front, there's a nice large LCD display, which will give you the status of the power station, the built-in battery, as well as the outputs. And we also then have a built-in torch, which is handy if you're out in the dark camping. There's also a dedicated DC input jack on the front too, which allows you to charge it via the supplied adapter or via their solar panels, which we'll take a look at a little bit more later on in the video. You can also charge via a DC accessory socket as well, and they include the adapter for that with the power station. What's nice about this power station is that it does have that dual charge option, which means you can charge it via the DC jack on the front, either with the mains power supply or the solar panels and via the power delivery port on the front as well. Charging time, will depend on the input, but if you're doing dual charging, you can do it in roughly three hours to 80%. If you're charging via the solar panels at maximum output, it could be roughly five hours, and it's about 10 hours to charge if using the car DC adapter. What's really nice about power stations like this is it does give you portable power with multiple options. You can charge your smart devices, your cameras, your laptops via those USB ports, but if you need AC, you do have that there as well, and you've got plenty of power with that 500 watt inverter to be able to do what most people would need to do whilst out camping or out and about. Powerness state that it does have grade A lithium ion cells. It is UN 38.3 certified, which means even if it gets banged about it's going to offer you lots of safety and it does have that built-in battery management system that handles the input the output looking after charging which should just offer the maximum safety with regards to the onboard batteries there are lots of other nice little features on this device as well, including pass-through charging, which means you can actually use it as a UPS, and that means you can continue to power your device in the event of an input power loss if you were using both at the same time. 
Externally, the U500 weighs about 5.2 kilos and size-wise, it's 260 by 173 by 170. Now, PowerNest do offer a two-year warranty on this as well, and they rate the battery on this for 1,000 cycles up to 80%. And what that should mean is you do have plenty of life and use out of the device, but you've also got a nice warranty there should there be a problem with the electronics in that period as well. Now with the kit I've been sent, I also have their 120 watt solar panel kit. It is four individual panels that fold up together and it weighs 4.7 kilos. On the back, you'll find there's a built-in charge controller, which has an LCD display showing you the current output of the solar panels. Setup is really quick and easy. You simply unfold the panels out. There are some legs on the back that flip out that are held in place with Velcro. And then you simply plug in the corresponding DC jack into the power station. The display will show you the current output to your power station, but also show you what you're drawing from the USB ports too. It has a 3-in-1 DC connector for attaching to the PowerNest power stations. It has a rated voltage of 18 volts under load or 21.6 volt open circuit with a maximum current of 6.6 .6 amps and they rate the panels as being 23% efficient. Alongside the DC output, there's also a USB-A output which allows 5 volts 2.4 amps and there's also a dedicated built-in USB-C cable again supplying 5 volts up to 2.4 amps as well, allowing you to directly charge smartphones and other USB-C devices. Now, as with any product I receive, I tried to test it as much as possible. And since doing the first bit of that video, I've been doing as much testing as I can on the unit, testing it out and about with my laptops, my devices, but also trying to understand the kind of power that you're going to be able to charge this device with, with that solar panel. Now, in my test so far, I've come across no problems. Everything looks good. And with regards to the input on those solar panels, you're going to be looking at about 85 watts max in my tests from the panel to the power station for charging the internal battery. Now that is lower than the 120 that they're rated at, and I don't fully at this moment understand the bigger difference. However, what I will say is you do need to remember that there is about another 20 odd watts available on the USB ports that's on the solar panels, so that USB-C and that USB-A port, but that is still a little less than you get in from the full rating, but you don't ever get the full rating on a solar panel anyway. But what I would say is with regards to charge current, we're talking about four amps max at 21, 22 volts, roughly 80 to 85 watts. And that's going to allow you to not only charge this whilst out and about, but also top it up or maintain it and power devices off the solar as well. And those tests were done on an absolutely banging bright day here in the UK. Now, alongside all of the usage testing, I've also been doing a bunch of bench testing, checking the voltages, the outputs, and actually measuring the amount of capacity we have in the battery. To do the capacity test, what we did was put a continuous seven amp load on the power station from 100%, and then measured the consumption with an external meter to measure that compared to what the battery rating is. For instance, if you look at the chart, you can see when we had 90% left on the display, we had consumed 3.49 amp hour. At 80% we had consumed 7.03, at 70% 10.3, at 60% 13.7, all the way down to 10% capacity we had drawn 29.2 amp hour. This chart shows you get roughly three to three and a half amp hour from the unit per 10%, depending on the actual capacity. And this shows a rough total capacity of about 32, 33 amp hour. And that's spot on compared to the battery rating. And what I would say is you're going to get roughly 29 amp hour of power usage from this device down to 10%. Okay, so I've had a few weeks to play with the PowerNest U500 as well as that solar panel kit and I honestly have to say I have zero complaints. The product itself does absolutely everything I expect it to do. Nothing I can say on this product has caused me any issues. What I really like is that solar panel option and whilst that isn't unique to this I do like the combination that PowerNest have provided here. You have that ability to charge it whilst out and about obviously weather dependent. For me I'm really looking forward forward to taking this camping in the next few weeks and going away with the family for about five days and what the real nice benefit for me will be is having the ability to top up the battery my fridge takes about 12 volts 4 amps and I'm going to be able to maintain that if it's a good day with the solar panels and 
what that's going to mean is rather than having to recharge these batteries as the days go on, as long as I've got the weather, I'll be able to top it up off the solar or maintain it or even power things like my fridge and not have to worry about it going flat. Really, if you're looking to get yourself a portable power station with a solar panel kit, I see zero reason not to consider this setup from PowerNest. About the only thing I would like is the bigger models. I always prefer more capacity, but what the nice thing with the U500 and the solar panel kit is, you can actually have a smaller unit as long as you know you're going to have the weather because you can top up that power with the solar panel and that way you're not actually having to carry a huge heavy unit with you. This size of battery is going to be perfectly fine for one or two days and then you can top it up with the solar but if you don't want to top it up with the solar you can top it up with the dc you can charge it in your car or you can charge it off mains again so if you are out and about driving you can simply pop it into your accessory socket and top it up as well if you need to overall i want to say a big thank you to powerness for sending this one over the power stations are actually very competitively priced and there is a link to this one as well as some of their others in the description as well it is a very good product as far as I can tell and if you're interested in getting one there will be a link to it in the description. I'm going to be making a follow-up video on some of these power stations I've been talking about recently in the next couple of weeks as a result of that camping trip so if you're interested in seeing that please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I'm really also interested in hearing about your thoughts on this power station as well. If you have any questions put it in the comment section I will try and answer it. If you've got one tell me what you think, tell me what you think about the solar panels because I'm really interested in getting your feedback as well because as always I can share with you my experiences but other people's experiences really do matter as well and if there is anything I've missed or highlighted that I shouldn't have please do let me know. Please also do consider checking out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.